so yeah, I was asked to um, bring out Phoebe from uh, from the collection. Um, there's a there's a kind of a an interesting ish story. I don't know if anybody's heard it um, when they've been to the museum, but if not, um, or if you have, I apologise. Um, but I was here when we first got this building, um, so that's about six years ago now. We weren't open. Um, I had a paintbrush in my hand and um, uh, was just trying to decorate and, and, and bring the place to look vaguely um, uh, respectable. Uh, failed. And um, somebody walked in and uh, said, uh, I've got a donation for you if you want it. You know, and, and hardly anybody knew the place was here. Um, certainly not the press or anything at that time. So it must have been an online um, uh, sort of source of information that he found us. But anyway, um, so he walked in, he said, um, I've got a machine for you. Um, it's, it's an Acorn Phoebe. Um, and I said, oh, okay, right. And I was completely thrown because I just didn't expect to see anybody anyway. Even more thrown than somebody walking with a Phoebe. Um, so I said, oh, right, okay, um, and what's inside it? And he kind of looked at me like I was a Muppet, and which not wrong, but he said, well, it's a Phoebe. So I said, yeah, I know, but, but, but what's inside? What have you got inside? Because I don't know if anybody knows, but there was, for a long time on eBay, um, Phoebe cases were available to buy. The warehouse was full of them and people were buying them and sticking all sorts of things in them. Um, so so I, you know, I just kept pushing him. You know, what is it inside of you? Stuffed an A3000 in there or a pie or what, what, what have you done? And it, it, no, no, it, it is a Phoebe. It's, it's the, a Phoebe that I was uh, working on um, uh, back then. And um, yeah, it, it's just, has never really seen the light of day. The, the project was canceled. So it was, the project was canceled in 1988, I think, believe. Um, and um, yeah, that was it. So sort of took this donation for this machine that I didn't even know existed. I didn't know that the machine had actually been physically made as it were. I knew they were working with the cases. I knew they were working on boards and things. Um, I didn't know it actually come to any kind of fruition. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is that machine. Now, um, this all looks a little bit over the top and I'm sorry, um, but I need to um, self-examine for a minute. Um, no, so, so everything we do here, um, we're, we're an accredited museum and in terms of preservation standards, there's things that we do um, that make sure that everything in the collection is as well looked after as it possibly can be, which means if it's in the accession collection, which Phoebe is because, um, uh, well, there is only the one or two um, of this uh, built to this level, um, that we make sure that we protect it as much as we can, which means not getting our greasy fingers and everything else all over it. Uh, so um, the gloves are to protect the machine. We've also got it on an anti-static mat, which is dubiously connected to the earth in other uh, mains plug underneath the desk. Um, so I'm going to switch over to the other camera now. So let's see if this is going to work. So if I say to this system, share my screen and share uh, that one, boom. Okay, so hopefully you can see the other cameras now, but it's going to be a bit delayed. Got thumbs up there, good, right, okay. Um, so, no, no, why? that's that one. So this is the machine. Um, it is uh, the Phoebe, lovely yellow colour, as you can see. Um, I really like it, a lot of people um, hate it. Um, so, uh, this is a machine. Uh, it's got a floppy drive, uh, has a CD-ROM drive uh, at the top there, a couple of bays. Um, for something else that you might want to add to it later. Obviously, it never was. Um, it's based around a strong arm uh, processor, uh, let's say 110, uh, running at about 233 megahertz, I think. Um, and basically, it was uh, it's also known as the RISC PC2. Um, so, this was the next step on from the RISC PC. It, um, in my mind, and people can um, correct me, I'm, I'm no expert on this. Um, this was basically adding, the most important feature to me was adding uh, the PCI bus to the system, uh, allowing that much more uh, expansion. Obviously, the, the chips inside, um, the uh, IO chip was more advanced, um, the VIDC was a, a new chip for it. Um, so in terms of the um, oomph inside it, there, then there is obviously a lot more, but one of the big things for me was adding that PCI just to bring it a little bit more in line with um, other boards that were, were out there at the time. Anyway, there she is. Um, I have another camera up here as well, so you'll be able to see inside, hopefully. Carefully as I can. 
Okay, so if I switch to that camera, oh, everything's delayed, it's really annoying. Just put on the screen there. Uh, so, everybody see that okay? Um, unfortunately, there is, a, there is a bit of a story with it. Um, we, we were um, shouting our mouth off for, for a long time saying, um, this is the only working figure in the world. Um, then it went and gone died. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's not anymore. I think it is actually technically working, um, <laughs> uh, but I don't think the graphics output is working. So it does seem to boot up um, and do things, but we have no graphic output. And when it was, when it was dying, um, the, it, was, it was that the, um, uh, let's go back to life for a second, um, it was that the uh, screen was failing. It would kind of come on, go off, come on, and, and do sorts of weird things, corrupt a little bit, um, and go a little bit doodally. So I have a feeling whatever is wrong with it, um, but it is something to do with the graphics output. Um, but anyway, uh, very kindly, Andy, nice girl that we um, just saw his uh, system uh, units there has been getting other people involved and having a look at the machine for us. Um, and we've done a sort of a, uh, well they have done, uh, a basic look at it just to check the, the obvious things. So we had a look at the power supply, it seems to be okay, and various things like that. And hopefully at some point after lockdown maybe, um, we'll get to the point where um, we can have another look at it and investigate a little bit further. Um, but like I say, I'm no, no major export, export expert on this, um, but we have um, two um, flash bomb chips down here, I believe. Um, so these are what was uh, being used to create the um, sort of low-level code for it at the time. Uh, I don't know if you see that over there. No, you can't. Let me turn that around a little bit. This isn't easy. That way. Just about to see it. Um, down there it says issue 1-002 um, on there. We've got... RAM chips, so we've got uh, SD RAM over here. Um, everywhere I move it, it's the wrong way. <laughs> Can't really see it because of the angle. Um, there you go. So we have the, the RAM down there. Um, crystal, we've got this kind of riser card here. Um, now this is quite interesting because that has the strong arm processor on it. Uh, I can just remove that from the board. Um, so I can focus that bit better for you. There you go. Um, so that has the strong arm processor card on there. Not really sure what all these are. Now if anybody can or wants to jump in and, and give me a little bit of advice on this, I am more than willing to hear. I'll be kind of debug stuff of some yeah. variety, probably bringing out the um, processor bus, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, I don't think it'd be debugged in some way. Um, but um, anyway, so, so that's a strong arm. Uh, like I say, it's an SA110 uh, running at 233 meg, um, according to uh, the things online. There's a little interesting uh, modification there. I don't know if that little chip there may be the voltage regulator, I'm not sure, um, but we've got a little piece of. Um, wire going across from R25 through to that, that first pin. Um, lovely little development kind of fix there. Um, so let's put that in there. Yeah, we uh, still focus on that? No, completely out of focus now. Okay. Um, so yeah, then we have... Oh, there. Okay, so what is that? Yeah, that looks all right. Um, so we have this expansion card. It's kind of the, the whole main PCB is kind of the expansion card on its side um, that plugs into this back bank here. So it's kind of the reverse of like a PC where you have, um, oh sorry, of the average back bank system. Uh, the, the, the riser board here is the one with all the PCI slots on it and there's um, seven PC slots at the bottom. Um, so all your cards would go in that way to the bottom there. Um, at the top, let me see if I can just move the camera rather than it being there. Uh, 
um, showing that the PC um, power brick there, that's pretty standard, I think, um, just different connections on it. Uh, and then we've got a, a hard drive in here um, that has been imaged. Um, Flibble took an image of that, um, and uh, I believe that's what was used to create a lot of the, the emulator um, that's online for it. Um, and that's kind of about really all there is to say, I think, anyway. Um, so actually, if we just look at the main board again, I might, if I'm going in closer, um, let's have a look. Well, that's as close as I can get. This is, this is enough, I think. Uh, so, this is uh, IOMD2. Um, that was one of the new chips developed for it. Um, and um, VIDC20 is up here. Um, that's that one there. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of complete guess, but I have a feeling it might be as simple as a connection issue on VIDC. I, I don't know. Um, but anyway, it's, um, it's beyond me. This, this is. Uh, above my station but it's really interesting so it's, a, it's a, a, a kind of a a tale of how companies end up having to, to drop their um the work that they're doing because i think this thing i'm going to switch over to the other camera if i can um da -da. where is it Got my two. I've got the left and left and right screen swap round, um, so I have to move my mouse off the end of that one to get to this one over here. Wasn't it? Anyway, um, so yeah, it's a bit of a, a sad tale of um, when companies sort of drop a product. Basically, this was was dropped because um, well, a, a it wasn't panning out very well. The operating system um, wasn't very stable. Um, there were problems with DMA, um, sound wasn't working, um, a number of different things. Uh, I'm sure that could have all been sorted over time, but you know, time costs money. Um, they'd already sunk a huge amount of money into the development of it. And bottom line is Acorn weren't playing in the kind of fields that, um, that I suspect they wanted to be playing in. So you know, this was a powerful machine. It would have uh, been a, a competitor um, two PCs, but they were just too dominant. Um, there was far too much else going on there, far too much um, money being thrown at them. And they considered this was going to be of interest to the enthusiasts um, that were out there, um, and that was not a big enough a market for them. So they dropped this in favour of looking at um, digital TV and things like that. But, you know, sadly, again, that didn't pan out for them either. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if anybody has any, any questions. Hi, uh, yeah, thank you, thank you for that, um, Jason. Um, I don't know if we're, I don't think we're recording at this second. We were recording um, uh, that talk there. Um, so yeah, this will be the, uh, the Q and A section now for the next few minutes or so. Um, Not too technical, eh? I'll, I'll start the ball rolling if I may, which is um, at the time you got it when it was sort of working. Um, did, did it boot into um, uh, you know a risk os yeah yeah um, so uh, yeah it, it, it was it was I, so so when the guy uh, dropped it off I was I, was like, I literally had a paintbrush in my hand um, so I didn't really um, want to get paint all over it but come about 30 minutes after he had left um, this bad boy or bad girl it's Phoebe um, all the chips in it are named after characters and friends, by the way. Um, the, uh, the, it was powered up and working within about 30 minutes of him leaving. There was no way I wasn't going to see what this thing was at. He told me it worked. Um, and it had also been taken around a number of shows and demoed. Um, so I can't remember um, what uh, version of Riscos it was, um, but it is online because we've, it got documented um, again, for it's um, Riscos 3.8. 3.8, right. Yeah, okay. so it's, ba it's basically a beta version of Riscos 4. Right. Um, but what they were doing with it is they were demoing it playing um, four or more videos at, uh, at any given time. 
Um, so that's not that impressive these days. Uh, but um, the, the, the demo that they, they love to show um, was four different videos all playing um, on the screen at the same time and everybody went, oh, this is, this is incredible, this is the future. Um, and um, yeah, that, that was, um, that's what they were doing with it to show how powerful it was. Just to see if we are still recording. Oh no, did I pick my nose? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, yeah. I've got gloves on. <laughs> Any more questions for Jason? Yeah, I was wondering if uh, um, at the time the Phoebe was developed, USB was just becoming a standard thing, and uh, would it have had USB support? I didn't. I haven't looked at the circuit diagrams or anything. Um, that's a, a good question, actually. Um, I didn't ever notice USB. Being no, on there's it. no USB on it. There's no USB on it. No. Um, and did it have the support for it? I doubt it. No. Um, it, it hardly had support for sound or anything else at, at the time. Um, it was right in the middle of development. Uh, I would imagine USB was going to come at some point. Um, Sarah, you might know a bit more. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think USB was ever really on the roadmap for Phoebe. Okay. Um, if they had added it, it would have been, you know, a PCI card with USB on it. Mm. But I don't think they'd even started thinking about it. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's quite a sad tale, really, of something just being axed. It must, must have been really hard if you were working on that um and uh and it just gets axed stop yeah. everything stopped the next day really sad yeah i mean there was, there was a problem really that it you know it was being left behind um i mean phoebe would have been a competitive machine two years before they were planning to launch it yeah um so for you know for a late 98 early 99 machine it was it was just too far behind right yeah sad can I ask what those two slots up the top are for? I presume one's a floppy and one's a CD drive. Yeah, floppy drive up here. Don't know if that is that. Can you see? Yeah, that is. Um, so yeah, uh, floppy drive there, hidden behind the front panel. And then you've got uh, uh, what is it? It's a Pioneer um, uh, CD, or it might be DVD actually. Um, Pioneer. I think it's CD. There. It was just CD, was it? Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, slot loading Pioneer drive there. Um, I know those. I had a Pioneer slot loading DVD drive on my PC. It was amazing. And uh, the next slot? And what could have gone in the other two slots at the front? Um, I'm guessing pretty much whatever you want. Um, and so these are kind of pull-out panels. Uh, so they, they, you know, this this is effectively pretty much your average PC case. Um, you know, so you've got push-out panels inside there. Um, it's, it's not a standard PC case, but it is, um, you know, getting there. Um, and you could have put whatever you wanted in there, I suppose, a second IDE thing um, or, uh, or whatever. Basically the same ideas as a PC. How does that go back in? If oh, I've got to the bottom now to get that one in. Oh, there you go. Oh, hello, bro. Hello there, Jason. I just thought, as we're doing weird machines that only that didn't quite make it, I've just opened up my Omega to have a look inside. Just opened up what? My micro digital Omega, oh. which was essentially oh. what came along later and probably was essentially Phoebe in the way in its spec. And it was strong arm with PCI and you know faster memory bus. But of course, they rather than creating custom IOMD and VIDC chips, they just used greatly FPGAs. Yeah. I you just got it thought, there? Sorry, carry on. Have you got it there? Yes. I was just going to see if I can point my laptop camera at it and whether it'll even be visible, but let's have a go. See what happens. Let's move this closer. Ooh. Yeah. Does that show up? No, nope, maybe like that. Is that showing up for people? I can't really tell yeah. you. Yeah. Um, so. As you can see, massive great tower case with a fairly small motherboard, really. <laughs> um, so, yeah, whereas the one in the um, Phoebe is pretty big. Yeah, so strong arm right in the middle there. I'm guessing that's the great the FPGA. Oh no, Xilinx, Xilinx is it? That's over there. Probably can't see that behind the cables. Mm -hmm. Riscos, I've got Riscos 439 in it. Um, 
as it would take. It came with Riscos 4. I did stick Riscos 439 in it um, and then promptly turned it off again after that because it was so much faster running Riscos from RAM rather than from ROM. <laughs> it's in the old RISC PC, it didn't make much difference, but in here you're kind of running 8 megahertz ROMs as opposed to 133 megahertz RAM. So mm. it's much quicker to soft load around the OS than run it from ROM. <laughs> so those ROMs aren't actually in use, but never mind. <laughs> I might take them out at some point. Um, as you see down here, PCI slots. So that was that's the network card, that's the sound card. Um, one sim up there, I think it was 256 meg. I have no idea what's under that gravy heatsink. It's probably the video. That'd be an FPGA. That's probably, that's probably the video chip then, I imagine, I guess. Or it's just a giant FPGA doing everything, I've no idea. Um, yeah, and this was my main risk cost machine for I don't know, 10 years or something. Mm. Really? So, so are Apple now going to be doing this again? <laughs> now they're using um, ARM-based processors in their in their desktop machines. Is that definitely happening? I haven't been following. The, or is it still just a rumor? I, I think it will happen, um, or is happening. Um, I don't know whether they're not released as yet, but, uh, but I think it will, it will happen. Um, I think it's a rumor, but a highly credible rumor. Right. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, I mean, obviously. If, if they stop using Intel processors and you use their own ARM-based processors, uh, it just takes another um, entity out of the supply chain, which is very much the way Apple goes. Oh, yeah. Mm. Um, and uh, as the iPad gets closer and closer to the Mac, uh, it's inevitable. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see. Uh, um, anybody have any other questions? Go on, I saw the um, black bit, the, the, the name, I, you know, we named our dog after it, yeah, and um, the, the name Phoebe's not there, because of course, when you search on Google, it has Phoebe where that, um, the disk drive is. Um, yeah, there were, um, I've seen a couple of different designs of cases, but very slight, basically it's only the screen printing that changes, um, so uh, there are there are a couple, I think we also have one of the cases that was on eBay, uh, the, you know, just an empty case in the collection. That's got a slightly different right. design and it has Phoebe printed on it. Um, I think it's just up there. Um, yeah. But yeah. yeah, yeah, there's just a so slight So how do you know it's a Phoebe? Um, because it's got a Phoebe board in it. Ooh! <laughs> Does it actually say Phoebe on the board? If it turns out not to be ah. Phoebe, I'm not going to be happy. <laughs> um, Feasible question. Let's have a look. Did you know? <laughs> does it say Phoebe on it? Yes, it does. Woo! Um, I'll do it with this camera. I don't know whether this camera can. Oh. I've got to prove it now. Uh, is that readable? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Let's go to Issue one. Lovely. Acorn Computers, 1988. I can't see on my screen if that's all of it. 1998. Well, 1988, sorry. Yep. And I have the glasses on. Oh. So, um, yeah. No, I think um, as with a lot of um, a lot of these things in the early development stages, things change all the time. So, um, yeah, just the fact that it um, hasn't got uh, Phoebe printed on the case. It's just probably because they decided uh, at some point, well, actually, let's let's make sure that is on there. And these would have been the ones that were being worked on at the time, and the later ones would have been ready for production. Um, so they were branded up better. Uh, is the names on all the other chips? The, no. Are it, the names of the, you know, the friends, are they on the chip? Yeah. No, it, well? doesn't, it doesn't actually say that on the chips. That's, that's Okay. The <laughs> um, they, they, they give these things names. Um, uh, which so just for internally for, for internal sort of fun and stuff you often see the names on circuit diagrams and stuff like that and occasionally you see the names underneath the chips so if you take a um i think the, the commodore amiga is was that next to it or under it i can't remember but on the on the main board if you take the chips off of it underneath you can see their names but you wouldn't right. take those chips off 
Um, right, okay. So yeah, this is all naming chips is all a bit of fun that the uh, the techies have yeah. um, when they're when they're doing these things. Um, I, I'd like to know why they chose. Well, there's obvious reasons. Friends was brilliant, but um, you know, it's it would be nice to know why they chose Friends. And um, what? Any what? signatures on it? Oh, sorry. So I said, what's it any worth? Signatures? Oh, right. So now you go. I just wondered if there was any signatures on it. You know how sometimes they have the people that have made it and things like that. That was all. But you go, Sarah. I was, I was just going to comment um, that Chris Cox, um, who was running Acorn um, Workstation Division at the time, has apologised for both the case and all the friends' names in it. Has apologised? Why? That's the best <laughs> thing about it. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I don't think there's anything to apologise for. I think it's cool. I love the fact it's called Phoebe. Um, that is, and, I, and I never really... Again, so so when it came in about what six years ago or so, um, I knew of Phoebe. I knew of the the legend of it, as it were, um, but I didn't know a great deal more about it at that point in time. So when one turned up, I was really surprised. But then it was another couple of years. Um, I think actually it might have been at an Acorn event when somebody said, "Oh yeah, all the chips are named after friends," and I thought, "Oh, that kind of makes sense. That does make sense." I never never thought of it, um, but uh, but yeah, I think it's fun. More computers should be named after people in sitcoms. One final question from me. Uh, I was wondering how um, how you're looking at uh, documenting the board and I don't know whatever else is available <laughs> on it. I know there are circuit diagrams about. I've seen them on Star Dot forums, uh, but I was wondering how closely it's been looked at to see about potential of designing. A new board to go in, you know, so that people could actually own a Phoebe as such. I think the problem with that is, is all the the um, custom chips are on there. So VidC20 and OMD2, it, yeah, they're they um, It's not just a case of creating the board. It's going to be a case case of recreating those chips as well. And they are not simple chips. Um, we're not going to be doing that with TTL series chips anytime soon. Um, so um, yeah, I, no. So I can tell you what we've been doing. Um, we have gone through our collection or are going through our collection. We have supporting documentation for it um, in various forms, some printouts, um, some um, sort of documentation about the, the implementation of the chips and things. Um, getting those scanned. Flibble um, has taken quite a lot of that stuff and scanned and, and, and got those out there. Um, so everything that we have we try to preserve in terms of the physicality of it. So looking after the machine, looking after documentation that goes with it um, and software or whatever else we can get. So we have an image of the hard drive. Um, but then in terms of, I think you're probably going more towards reverse engineering the board and making them available. Um, that's not our remit of what we do. Um, however, we love it when people use our stuff to make that happen. Um, so we've had a guy come and do the the out uh, the MSI eighty eighty. Um, uh, Andy had a look at our um, system one um, and that sort of thing. And, and you know, for people to come along, take a, a really good nose at things and, and try to make rebuilds and stuff, brilliant, love it. Um, we can't do it. We don't we don't have the uh, wherewithal um, time in the day and all the rest of it. Um, but but we're really willing to help anybody else do that. So taking ROM dumps as well, we're doing that all the time for everybody. Every week we'll get another request saying, oh, you've got this machine. Can, can you possibly give us a, a ROM dump? And we, we, we say, we're quite, we're quite careful. We say, yes, we can, but you kind of didn't get it from us. <laughs> um, it, it's, uh, uh, oh yeah, oh crap, this is recording. Um, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, it's not doing any harm. Um, and it's, it is another further process. We, we take ROM dumps for ourselves. Um, we put them on our server. We don't make them publicly available because it's slightly iffy. Um, and from our point of view, we, we can't, we shouldn't be seen to be doing that. But we do take those, and if people ask nicely, they they fall out of our pockets. Um, but yeah, not no rebuilds for us as such, unfortunately. And if you did rebuild it, the um, operating system software support is pretty unfinished for VB. Um, yeah, sound, so I think sound, sound doesn't work. PCI has not been implemented. Floppy drives don't work. I don't think ports on the. I don't think serial parallel ports work. Um, and there's just numerous other issues with it. 
makes more well, sense just to always... build a brand new machine of some yeah. other thing. Yeah, well, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 there probably isn't much point in terms of um, anybody else having one of these to do anything with. Um, but apart from, you know, just the, the joy of owning something like that, but then it's, it's not the original anyway. I don't know. I mean, for me, quite a lot of the, the, the rebuild stuff um, doesn't have the same uh, feeling that, that having the original stuff does. Um, and I know I'm in a better, uh, yeah, a better position, obviously being involved in the museum and walking around this stuff all day. Um, but even if I think I was just doing it personally, it's, it is all about having the original machines. As much as I love the rebuild projects, brilliant. Um, especially when you're able to make those available to other people that wouldn't get to have these things, that's fantastic. But at the museum, it is about having the, the original stuff. They say with a copy of an Apple one, but anyway, whatever. Um, Did anyone ever get these? circuit diagrams and things for the micro digital omega because that was that was almost like a rebuild of phoebe wasn't it since it was re-implemented it all as fpga so mm. did micro digital actually release at the elasta well i don't know but presumably i've forgotten the game of the guy who did it and i can't but if he's still around i want to be kept the documentation of how the fpga was done because these days i'm sure you could get quite a cheap fpga to do it and mm. 20 years ago it was quite tricky but yeah mm. FPGAs are amazing. I love them. The things that are being done with them now to keep old machines alive, uh, replacements of components and things like that, fantastic. Absolutely the best thing ever. Uh, anything else? Yeah, quick question for Sarah actually. Um, it, it, the ROM, I don't know if, I've had a quick look through it on the Phoebe. Um, I noticed on the circuit diagram there was a, a post port um, implemented as per normal risk PC. Um, but I couldn't see anything in the ROM code um, that was actually running, um, you know, trying to write to the post port. So I was just thinking in, in the, if we ever get round to, to, to getting my Acorn engineer buddies uh, to uh, have another look, um, you know, I've got a post adapter that I've built up that runs fine on the on the RISC PC, um, but just struggling to see how that could run on the the RISC PC too if we ever get to that point. But um, any comments on that one? I, I don't know if that was implemented. I mean, I did look at this a few years ago because I did the um, Phoebe emulation in RPCMU. Yeah. I didn't didn't take credit at the time because I was working for ARM, um, but I don't remember seeing anything around that yeah i was just double checking with it with a with an expert as it were because as i say the hardware's there it just sounds like then nobody's put anything in the rom or or, or basically scrubbed it for something else yeah well, it wouldn't surprise me I mean, they probably wouldn't have have much in the way of um posts in you know in a machine of that that level of development thanks yeah yeah 